I'm glad to see you all. My name is Vyacheslav. I'd like to discuss a very important topic. It is making a decision, a really important one, especially for those who have started the business recently. I know we have many of them right here and right now. But I would like to know if we have people who have started the business literally a week ago. Are you saying that some of you started the business less than a week ago? Okay, raise your hands those who have started it during this week. I mean these seven days. Come on, raise your hands. Okay, I see. So, this topic will be very helpful for those. My name is Vyacheslav. A little more about me. I'm 28 years old. I was born in this state, in a small city not far from here, about 300 kilometers away. I've been living there until 17. Then I moved to this city to work, entered the Economics Institute, eventually I successfully graduated from it. I got even nearly expelled once. I lost one year, it was on my fifth year. I couldn't pass my state exam. The main reason was that I was really busy by that time. I was earning money. I've understood one simple thing on my second year. You don't have to listen to other people if you earn much more money than they do. I knew that the average salary of a teacher could be about $1,000. By that time I was 22 and my income was about $15,000. So I started to realize that I need another kind of information, I need another knowledge. Now I'm going to tell you about my path, how my business started and so on. I try not to talk much about it, but I was asked to. I finished the school at 17. I have been awarded with the silver medal. But my strongest point in school was not a perfect study. It was more about making a deal with teachers because I struggled to get this medal. Then I moved here. I entered the university. The first year was really tough for me. It was more like surviving, but definitely not studying. I lived with my friend. He came from my home city too. He came to study. So we had enough money to rent not a flat, but a house. It was a unique district. It was a very distant district too. Almost in the suburbs. It was an old, discrepant house. The rental price was about 1,000 and a half rubles. Our budget was very small, so it was the only apartment we could afford. I went to the university by tram every day. The travel course price was 150 rubles, but the minibus was more expensive, so I couldn't afford it. I had a difficult situation with money. The education fees were really huge, so my parents paid for it, but I had to find money for living myself. It took me 20 minutes to go to the tram station on foot. It was especially fun in autumn, when the weather was rainy and muddy. So I had to leave home early so that I could have enough money to clean my shoes in the restroom before the classes. They were so dirty. The tram road took about 40-50 minutes. I woke up at 5.30 am and classes started at 8 am. I had a dream, it was to get to the university by car. On the same road I did it every morning. I have been dreaming about it so much. I bought a car in my third year. And every time I went down this road, I remembered that it was my biggest dream a while ago. I had my first achievements in the second year. My projects became more successful. The third year, I was already financially stable. I felt more confident, and when I was 20, my income was sufficient and stable. At the age of 22, my income was about $15,000 per month. I bought a car, it costed $40,000. I was only 22. I went home, showed it to my father. He didn't appreciate it.
He thought that it is not right to earn such money or have a car at my age. Since that time, so I can recall, I have never had any difficulties with money. Do you know why? Maybe because I've learned several tips for myself and have been following them my whole life. Since then, my money troubles have left me. The main skill I've learned at the age of 19 was the decision making. It is very important. I've read so many books. One of the smartest Russians told, reading is the key element in intelligence shaping. The culture of reading is very important in raising children. The reason is that we get a lot of information while reading. It helps a human to form its own way of thinking. I've been reading mostly fiction literature up to 17, so I was really interested. But after that I started to read literature aimed to a personal development. It was exactly that moment when literature changed my perspective of you. I began to think everything over, my actions, plans. It gave me a knowledge how life works and how I should live. Every game has its own rules, and you have to follow these rules no matter what. We can find such rules everywhere, physics, math, you name it. Let's take the law of universal gravitation. It works no matter how you treat it or what kind of person you are. If you make a step down on the roof of a five-story building, you will crash, and it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. The world of business and money has its own rules as well, and it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, or what kind of person you are. And they work and do not take in consideration your belief and life principles. And when you know the rules of the game, you get a chance to win it. For example, if you step on the football field without knowing any rules, the chance of winning is small. But when you know the rules and learn some tactics, there is a possibility of success. So, the main rule that I have learned during my life is a principle of decision making. So, how does it work and what is required for this? At first, do you agree that decision making is important? Not even in business, but in everyday life. Do you agree? So, how does it happen? We make a decision, act appropriately and get a result. And your result is a direct consequence of the decision you made. Let's talk about it. What part of the body do you use to make decision? Are you lost in thought? Yeah, of course it depends on the situation. As for men, it is a very tricky question. Okay, let me draw it. I'm gonna draw. It is a brain. I don't know what you meant, but I definitely did mean a brain. So, we make a decision with help of a brain. There is a certain amount of information and brain handles it and makes decisions. As we can see, this is a head. Information comes right into brain. Some kind of a process happens. Boom, you get a solution after that. If we examine brain, we should examine the whole system responsible for that process. And this system consists of two parts. 5% belongs to our consciousness and 95% belongs to our subconsciousness. You may have already heard something about it. What does the consciousness mean? It includes experience. What else? Any suggestions? It is what you see, what you hear, what we analyze, what we know for sure, and what is going on around us, meaning the experience of environment. But main elements are my personal experience and environment's experience. 
Moving on, what does some consciousness mean? Usually people mean an intuition by that. You've heard about female intuition, and someone will say that male intuition doesn't exist. But all of that has nothing in common with the real life. Everybody has intuition, but the main difference is that men are more practical. They rely exclusively on facts, they are not used to listen to their inner voice. Women are more emotional, they rely on their subtle feelings. To sum it up, the subconsciousness means an intuition. Generally speaking, it includes the experience of the whole humanity. It consists of all information that have been generated by all generations. It is a human experience, like all information that have ever existed. It is right here. You won't believe it, but we have it inside our heads. You probably have heard one famous scientifically proven fact. It says we use only 5% of our brain's power. If we could have used all 100%, we would have had supernatural abilities, such as mind reading, teleportation, levitation. Is it clear? But to be honest, sometimes 5% may seem exaggerated. I think you agree with me. I suppose 5% brains belongs to geniuses who are always trying to improve their mind. Therefore, there are people who do not want to develop. Furthermore, they have never tried to. And the most interesting thing is that brain is a muscle. You should always train it, and reading is perfect exercise for your brain. I mean reading a proper literature by that. It is a fitness for your brain. Sometimes we have headache. Why does this happen? Because brain works like a real muscle. The simplest example is a first visit to gym. What do you struggle with the next day after that? Your muscles ache. So if you have a headache after reading, it means your brain is not trained enough. But if you do it every day, force your brain to work and analyze. It will get better every day. Let's move on. 5% is our consciousness, the thing that we can use. And while making decisions, usually we use exclusively our experience and environment experience. I must emphasize, all information is stored right here in the subconsciousness. All knowledge, all information, but we don't have access to it. To be more precise, sometimes we get this access, but very seldom. You may have heard about physics, mediums. These are people who have supernatural abilities. They can see something from future, predict it. Such as Nostradamus, who else? Baba Vanga. It means these are people who can use a certain amount of subconsciousness. They have access to endless information, and usually when we make a decision, we take in consideration only our consciousness, and this is our main mistake. We will analyze it in a minute, and you'll get it. Let's look at the algorithm. When your brain receives the information, what happens right away? You get the information, what does occur next? The first answer, the first response you get is from your subconsciousness. Simply put, it's an intuition. And subconsciousness starts working only a while after that. Consciousness resembles a pig. It may be big or small. It sits on your shoulder, and her main goal is to tell you all kinds of nasty things. Everyone has it, you may not see it, but it's right there on your shoulder. As a result, it is aimed to keep you right where you are now. You should be as still as possible. It persuades you not to change your life. Its main argument is that everything is fine, therefore do not change anything. As a result, you stand still. Once again, the information goes into a subconsciousness first, and then into a consciousness. And consciousness usually is the main trouble for a human. Why are people afraid of something new? If it is something unknown, rejection is a very common reaction. Why does it happen? What is going on? 
Imagine that consciousness is a warehouse, a tremendously big room where all kinds of things are stored. Or it may be presented as information cells. It is warehouse, but inside your head. And it stores the information instead of boxes such as your own experience. So when you get the new information, your pig on the shoulder starts checking it up with your warehouse. It checks all cells and shelves inside it, and if there is no match found, it rejects it. Let's learn a simple example. Someone earns $500 a month, someone $1,000. So when people come to an interview, they are being told about salary up to ten or $15,000. Our pig immediately rejects it. It hears. You can earn dozen thousand dollars. Pig goes to the warehouse. It finds out that the maximum salary you have ever got is one thousand dollars. It says it's impossible because there is no match found that could have corresponded to a new information. And you most likely to believe it. Or another example. You have never heard about network business. And once upon a time you suddenly find out it exists and you can earn a lot of money with it. Of course the pig goes to the warehouse and happens the same thing. The pig starts searching. And the only information it comes across with is different stories, such as when your neighbor tried to distribute lipsticks and failed. So that's why a network business is something scary and harmful. And the pig declares, no, it doesn't work, forget about it. It is a very important principle. If you don't have such experience, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. Let's examine the structure of experience. If a person is satisfied with life, there are a lot of positive things inside his head. But it happens not that often. If we try to develop, try something new, everything may not be so bright. Although these negative moments are not so strong to force you to move on in any direction. Donald Trump. Have you ever heard about him? Of course. I suppose he had his own pig on the shoulder, as all of us do. But no matter what, he started to do something and earn money. The key moment is when you try to do something despite your doubts and environment. When I was introduced to the network business system, I really liked it, but my pig continued to convince me otherwise. I asked it to shut up and decided to go check this out. It was grumbling, but I didn't care. I started to take actions and received a feedback. I earned my first money, so is it a positive thing? Of course it is. It has been cheering me up for a while, and then the number of these positive things started to grow. So all these pluses grew out to even bigger pluses, and so on. So now it's me who decides what kind of information I will store in my warehouse. And when you read books about famous and rich people, you will get this idea even better. The thing is about these positive moments and pluses. Let's get back to Donald Trump. He earned more and more money, so one day he became billionaire. There were one billion dollars in his warehouse. But then he lost his business and became broke. So all these billion dollars inside his head helped him out to make a fortune once again. And moreover, he earned the same amount of money but much faster. Why? Why? Because he had experience. And when bad things happen, your pig will help you. Because the pig is interested in achieving those positive things from your past. So when he became a billionaire, the same pig convinced him to move forward and earn even more. There is a billion dollars in your head, not a million, so come on, get it again, the pig said. All your doubts about what you can and what you can't, this is your pig. When doubts arise inside my head, my reply is very simple. I say, shut up and let me handle this. If someone did it, I can do it as well. Using such principle gives you an opportunity to manage your warehouse yourself. You will fill it with positive information such as good work. Now I understand that nothing is impossible. You can insert any information into a warehouse. 
Next, let's talk about managing this information. Until you don't have any personal experience, I mean a real experience of earning large amounts of money, you can use other people's experience. You can collect this information and put it in your warehouse. It is called self-programming or mind programming. A good practice for that is reading. So when you read, your pig on the shoulder reads it too. Convenient to read sit and write on your shoulder. So we read together. And sometimes it gets really amazed of what is written. Oh my god, a man has his own island. It is a new information, which the pig can accept or reject. As for me, I personally understand that it is okay to have my own island. When you enter it into a warehouse, the pig changes its behavior. So when I have an idea to earn 5 million dollars and buy an island, my pig accepts it. By the way, this is a fine price for an island, about 3-5 million dollars. Mike Pig says, OK, you won, go ahead. In fact, it doesn't matter what the pig says. The most important thing is that it shouldn't slow you down. Next question. What information is suitable for our warehouses? I'm going to tell you about a special mind state. Its name is Alpha Level. It is a perfect state of consciousness when your pig is asleep. It may be 30 minutes before or after your sleep. It happens when you have already got up, but your pig hasn't yet. That's because it is lazy. All pigs are lazy. There are people whose pigs get up before them. And a simple question arises in my head. Who is a pig and who is a human then? Maybe there is no human at all there. This 30 minutes before and after sleep is a time period when it is very easy to insert a new information into a warehouse. This information doesn't get filtered. But in other times of the day, the pig uses its own filter. When you read about an island, its major filter is if it's possible or not. And when you try to understand this information, analyze it, maybe the pig will accept it. But you can't get rid of this filter. That's why I read books for self-development 30 minutes after and before sleep. It means that I end every day with a book in my hands and meet a new day with a book again. This is the perfect time when my brain accepts new positive information. Those people who fall asleep watching a TV, it is a self-programming as well. And if we examine the geopolitical atmosphere of past few years, we will notice a terrible zombie programming of people. It is awful. If you like watching news before sleep, I have bad news for you. Your programming is aimed at poverty, depression and other bad things. One day you will become a person scared of everybody and everything war, crisis and so on. There are already lots of people like this. If you use public transport, go ahead and listen to what people are talking about. All of them are scared of something. It is something I do not do. I prefer to think about positive things rather than about fears. And that's why I read every day in the evening and in the morning. These are things I do. You can apply these tips in your life as well. If it works for me, it will work for you. Reading is a necessary amount of positive information. It motivates me. I have a favorite TV channel, it is Nickelodeon. So when I eat breakfast, get dressed before going to office, I watch SpongeBob, Madagascar. This channel is awesome. It makes me smile and it is okay. It is much better rather than listening about economics, war and so on. Someone died, someone got killed, it makes you upset. Or it may be better to listen to an audiobook. I have a good habit of listening to motivational audiobooks when I drive to office or home. I always listen to audiobooks, literally anything that helps me to grow. This is the type of information I want to talk inside my head. 
the major moment is when you begin to get a positive experience. We will talk about it a little more. Let's assume that you have never held a presentation. You don't have any positive experience of public speaking yet, but the day when you need to enter the stage has come, and the first time is no doubt the most difficult one. In any sphere of your life, it is always so hard to do something for the first time. It is always hard to begin, first call, first interview, first meeting, but it is very important to do. You should do it anyway in order to get a positive experience. As soon as you have done it, for example, a first presentation or meeting, you will get a certain result. And you can store the result in your warehouse. It will cheer you up in future, thus will help you success even more. And while after that you'll become unstoppable. Let's clear everything up about consciousness and subconsciousness once again. We have already learned that when information comes to our brain, subconsciousness reacts first. It takes about 3 seconds, maybe even less. It happens really fast when you get information and immediately receive a feedback from your brain. You can even notice it, as for me, I notice it all the time. The best example is my recent trip. I had to pay some kind of a bill. I came to the bank, I gave my documents to the bank assistant, but I've been told that the bank can't process my payment. Moreover, the assistant added that it was impossible. I was very polite and asked her to try again. I was far from home and I didn't want to have any troubles with my bank. And it is a perfect example that you can get what you want using communication. When I hear no, it is like a blank sound for me. I know that finally I can get yes. So I started to persuade her. She agreed to try to solve my problem one more time, but I have been asked to buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, this is how it works in Russian banks. I said ok and bought a lottery ticket. The rules were very simple. You should scratch several squares. The main price was a flat. You scratch the first two squares, if they are winning, you move to the next two. Really simple, it was like a staircase. There were some small prizes on the way to the top, but never mind. There were nothing compared to the major prize. My life experience showed me that the first decision is the best one. As soon as I took the lottery ticket, I got a signal from my brain, left square, immediately. Ok, while I was busy with paperwork, my pig on the shoulder woke up and it started to argue, why on earth should I scratch the left square? I think we should choose the right one. And then a madness begins. Why do you feel like that? It is more likely to be the left one. But on the other hand, it is crazy, hundreds of thoughts in one moment, and you don't even know what to do next. I can tell an impressive fact about snipers. Those who shoot have a simple rule, don't wait, shoot right away. Because if you slow down and wait, your gun and body will begin to wiggle. That's why they try to shoot as soon as possible, almost immediately. This is what we call the playback speed. The speed is very important even in everyday life, but we will talk about it later. While I was busy with documents, my pig on the shoulder finally persuaded me to choose the right square. As a result, I scratched the right one, but the left square was the winning one. But the truth is that intuition always tells you the right answer, but if you want to hear it, you should have a skill of listening to yourself, it's not that easy. You should always listen to your inner voice, and I have even something to add. I always notice the detail at trainings and lectures. Maybe you have noticed it too if you are fond of this fear. Most of them tell you, if you are up to something, go and just do, no matter what. You should be determined. When you receive the information, the first thing you hear is probably the right thing to do. By the way, raise your hands to those who like sex. This question is very easy. Raise your hand if you like sex. Don't worry, this is a private meeting.
I didn't ask it just for fun. This is another confirmation of this theory. Only male will understand this example. If you see a pretty girl, you have only 3 seconds to think it out, and you have only 15 seconds to act. For example, say hi or absolutely anything, but you have only 15 seconds to begin. Let's examine it even closer. Let's imagine you are walking down the street, you see a really gorgeous woman you really like. You should act very fast. The first signal you get is from your intuition. It says, come on man, go get her. But then the pig on the shoulder comes in. It's a stop. And the same madness happens again and again. It may tell you, she will reject you, she is not single, failure is humiliating. Look at her and look at yourself, wake up, man. After that you are in a weird condition. You are kind of afraid to act but your pig pulls your leg, trying to stop you. Simply because this is out of your comfort zone, and if you accept it, you won't courage enough to do it. And this is not even the end. The pig will probably continue talking after that. It is always like this. It is a very nasty creature that will never leave you alone. And her main argument will be something like, oh man, look at her. She's not even that pretty as we thought. But you are a handsome man, you don't even need her. We have a lot of time, we will get our piece of pie one day, don't worry. Yeah, this is funny, who can relate? This is another example of how bad it is to listen to a pig. I hope we cleared it out. We can see a standard scheme here. Your brain received information, your subconsciousness gave you a feedback, and this is the right moment to act. Go and do it. Another example is about female. This is the common situation in nightclubs. Everybody is dancing, you feel freedom and so on. And it is 100% guarantee that girls have really noticed it many times. When a certain man walks around them, what do you think he's doing? Of course talking with his pig, no doubts. I think this is the best example I could have ever given to you. He's walking, walking and then he makes an effort comes closer and says hi. So, girls, tell me, do you have any desire left to communicate with a person like that? Definitely not. But another situation. The looks have crossed and he immediately makes a verbal contact. He comes closer, says hi, makes a compliment, he looks confident. He could not have been a good interlocutor, but he has started a conversation. It matters. Some men do even write scenarios on their phones. Remember, it doesn't work, believe me. The thing that works the best is an absence of the analysis. And as we all know, the analysis is represented by the pig. It is something that stops you, you need to quit that bad habit, constantly analyzing everything. You receive the information, boom, act immediately, analyzing should not even exist in your head. This is what we call the playback speed. For the entire time of working in network business, I have noticed that succeed only those who do not analyze. Those whose playback speed is really high. When they hear the information, they do not think about it, they just implement it. When we tell them that presentation is a necessary part of a network business, they just go and offer their presentations to people. It may seem silly, but it works. This is something that will move your business forward. Once again, these are people who do not analyze. It is the key element. I will tell you about an interesting incident that I've encountered with. It took place in a small Russian city. We met a guy, he wanted to join our team. It was in the office, and he looked really strange. It is even hard to describe. Imagine a guy who have just got out from under the car. By the way, he was an auto mechanic. So imagine a picture like that. 
and he wanted to hold a presentation for people. Imagine it one more time. He had very long, old, dirty pants. It was a real mess. And moreover, he wasn't Russian, had a strong accent. He had an unpleasant appearance and smelled so badly. Dirty hands. So imagine a man like this came to my office. He wanted to do business and swore he'll do his best. I was shocked. And here the pig on the shoulder came in the game. I said, no, don't work with him. He will fail, I guarantee it to you. As a result, we had a nice conversation with him, and I decided to take him in. He turned out to be a perfect example of a person who doesn't analyze. The most interesting thing happened later. He came to me, he came to me again and asked me, what should he do? He really liked it there, and he wanted to earn money with our company. And my answer was very simple. You should have many meetings, like really a lot of meetings. I told him he should have at least 20 appointments a day. It means you should make a lot of phone calls. And he did everything right as I told him to. And his results were really astonishing. In three months he achieved something some people couldn't achieve even in three years. He earned lots of money. I told him, you should take a bath, cut your nails, get a fresh haircut, change your clothes, buy new shoes and a brand new case. The next day he came exactly as I told him to. He even took a loan. As you can see, this is a man who is unfamiliar with an analysis. It took him only a half of a year to grow from an auto mechanic to a wealthy man. So now it is absolutely clear for me that only those who do not analyze do succeed. No thinking, no calculation, just a pure action. You receive a signal, act right now, it is very important. So our pig is something that interferes in our decision-making process. How do we feel? What barriers do we also have? Maybe environment. Am I right? Let's talk about it. Someone said a human is a social being. It's a quote. So as we live in society, we depend on other people's opinions. Is that correct? Of course, maybe anybody lives in a deep forest. If it was like that, maybe we would have depended on wild squirrel's opinion. I don't know. But I do know that we always depend on something. The environment and close people to us may be presented as a circle. Let's draw it. And we live inside this circle. If you are satisfied with your life, I will draw you with a smile on your face. But that's not the case. The more important thing is the size of your ears. The bigger they are, the stronger you depend on what you hear about yourself. So you kind of live your life, you have friends, relatives and so on. Neighbors, maybe you even have a girlfriend or a wife. I mean, there are a lot of people around you. And every each of them has an influence on you. Let's examine an average person, an average family and close people to them. Let's suppose that they have an average income as well. Usually people have the same kinds of conversations. And the main direction is how bad everything is. Do you agree? For sure. Common topics is that our government is awful. Have you noticed it? Yes, but to be honest, the life in Russia is not that bad. The life here is very convenient. We have been to Greece last weekend. And this is really a very poor country, no jokes. Our life feels like heaven compared to Greeks. The times have changed. Russia is a prosperous country, but Greece isn't. Recently, I have talked with my colleagues about green card. We were really eager to get it, but our American colleagues convinced us not to do it. I was surprised. The main argument was about strict American taxation system. The income tax may be up to 40%. Are you sure that you need it? Asked us our American friend. It sounds crazy that when you earn money, you have to give almost a half of it to the government. I have had the same conversation with Swedes. They were always positive, always smiling, so I asked them, what's up, how does it feel like to live in Sweden? How do you run business there? They answered, 
Oh, you know, it is awesome. Our income tax is only 55%. I was shocked. They were so happy about it. So hilarious. We are lucky. Russia is the best country because we don't pay taxes. Of course, this is a joke, a kind of a true joke. So I replied to my Sweden guys, our tax is only 13% and many people do not even pay it. I'm going to tell you about Sweden company IKEA. I've read its history. The administration was forced to move to Belgium or Holland. The reason was simple, high tax rate. So it is really difficult to earn real money if you pay such amounts of taxes. Let's get back to our average society. You may ask them, why can't you earn a lot of money? You will hear hundreds of different answers. So even if one person is ready for real action, he is active. There are a lot of passive people around him. They will blame our government, will tell something bad about their country. So even if you are ready to change your life and start earning money, people around you will probably discourage you. It, it is true, but also it sounds like another excuse. It is very convenient to blame someone. But if you didn't earn any money today, whose fault is it? It's your fault and no one's else. But let's take an example. There are people who have so many things in common, two arms, two legs, one head, live in the same country, grew in the same neighborhood, went to the same kindergarten, studied in the same school and university, we were so close. But one succeeded and another didn't. Why? Because everyone built his own life himself. So if you don't earn money, it is only your fault. Look at the ordinary social group. It is like a swamp, it is calm and quiet there. Just notice when relatives talk to each other, it is a total understanding. One of them is complaining and another is listening. Why? Because as soon as the first one closes his mouth, the second one will say, oh, that's not that bad, listen to me, I have real problems. It's an infinite circle. And the one whose life is the worst wins. Why? Because he is looking for the best excuses for doing nothing. There are a lot of opportunities to earn money in Russia right now. Can you imagine that some people are really satisfied with the salary of 25,000 rubles? And they don't want to change anything. These people were born for life and money like this. Okay. Okay, but what about education? Is it possible to get a high quality education with money like this? I'm talking not about London, just ordinary education. Is it possible? Next, about love. Can you afford love with money like this? The answers are obvious. Let's talk about the right way to relax. You're walking down the street and calling to a friend. Let's go to Las Vegas. Yeah, nice idea. You arrive in Las Vegas. What's next? Let's rent a car and drive to Los Angeles. Yep, deal. And this is how it works. When you relax, you shouldn't be limited. You do what you want to. Next topic. People like to give presents. Who likes to give presents? Raise your hand, please. I think everyone. It is even more enjoyable than getting them, and it is pleasant to look at people when they give gifts to each other. And those who earn 25,000 rubles, they think the best gift is a book. Why? Because it's cheap. Or another fairy tale. The best present is the one made yourself. Who believes in that? I think the best present is a white swan or something beautiful. Who agrees? Imagine a situation when you come to your girlfriend to wish her a happy birthday and you give her a white swan or anything really expensive that you can't even think about. And you can't afford it, no problem, imagine this feeling. I came to my mom on her birthday and said, choose any brand new car and I will buy it to you, anyone you want, just point at it with your finger. She replied, I want a red one. I still remember it. Now, luckily, my mom is more familiar with modern cars. It was a small digression, but a funny one. <laughs> Another important sphere is healthcare. Will 25,000 be enough for you to afford a high-quality medical service? 
Absolutely not. If you have had something left, you could have tried, but it's impossible. You can't even die properly with this money, because funeral is expensive as well. So when a person lives inside these boundaries of 25,000 rubles, he degrades. People live like this, and they are even satisfied with it, because stability is very valuable for them. It is a swamp, but it is a stable swamp. Imagine a big group of people, relatives, friends, neighbors, and all of them are standing in a stinky swamp. It's so deep. It is almost reaching top of their heads. It is even difficult to talk there. And everyone endures it, because they think it could have been worse. The swamp is not the best place, but it is calm, warm and quiet there. Imagine a random person entered this swamp with exclamations about a new opportunity to earn some money. He tells them about network business, about the company and how great it is. He pushes them out of this swamp, but he will receive a simple reply. Man, slow down. When you break a piece in quietness, you immediately will get a negative reaction. People will resist and is a common thing. This person tells them about this opportunity. He describes his goal, how big it is and how hard he is ready to work in order to achieve it. How proud he is of his new office. It doesn't matter. You can say anything, but it is impossible to break a comfort zone. They are robed. They can't even think themselves. And even if you have a beautiful dream, it will be always outside of this zone. Why? Because if it had been inside, everyone would have accomplished their dream. It's talking about us. You and me, we always try to catch a star. But in order to do it, you should leave your comfort zone. It means doing something you have never done before. It is necessary to change your lifestyle in order to achieve your goals. So when you try to leave this comfort zone for the first time, what kind of reaction will you get from your friends? How do you think? It will be a negative reaction, for sure. What are you doing? Are you mad? They will tell you it's a sect. As for me, their swamp is a real set. Gathering together and complaining, this is a true sect. Let's imagine network business is a sect. If so, I prefer to be here. At least it gives me a lot of opportunities. Let's examine psychological reason involved here. People will try to stop you simply because they are afraid that you will succeed. But they don't even understand that. Indeed, your friends are frightened of your success. It's not about envy, everything is much simpler. You violate their well-established state of affairs. They are used to constant complaining and searching for excuses. But when you leave a swamp right in front of them and succeed no matter what, it is a real nightmare for them. It means that they are not hard-working enough. It means it is only their fault that they don't have enough money. So people who are not ready for changes will try to stop you. They are not ready to move. They prefer to stay put. Let's imagine you don't listen to them. You continue to work. One day you will cross the edge of your comfort zone. In order to do it, you should start doing new, unknown stuff. I mean making appointments and calls by that. The most important things in network business. And sometimes it happens when a person just had tried to leave a comfort zone once, realized it was difficult and quit. Do not fall in depression, it is a common thing. Two or three weeks long, it happens. People like to find new excuses every day. If you fail, just try again. If you failed one call, make another one.
It doesn't matter what you do as long as you keep moving. If you have chosen a path, complete it. It is also useful to burn bridges. It makes for you impossible to come back to your swamp. You can't close the door until you let the handle go. Let it go and finally close this door. Burn the bridge and move forward. This is something that forces you to keep going forward, because you have nowhere to come back. Only forward, to the bright and happy future. So we can define this zone as a discomfort zone. When you are inside, you are a little irritated and have no idea where to go. You will break several bones on your new path. It is okay, you will fail, you will analyze, you will change your tactics. You should deal with it while working in a team. As for me, when I work with my team, I give some members an opportunity to learn this way. But usually, people tend to choose a more painless way. In either way, you move forward together. As for me, I really like to leave my comfort zone. I like trying new things. I like trying new ways. I like doing something I have never done before. Do you know why? Because it helps me to reveal my weak points. The discomfort area shows your potential. You start to grow. When it is quiet and calm, your potential dies, you are asleep. And when you feel pain, your brain starts working. You may discover new strong points inside. Extreme situations can show your true hidden personality. You begin to develop. It is a wonderful feeling. Do you know what is the best thing about network business? Not money, friends or offers. It is a personal growth. It is realizing that you will never become poor. Because you improved your main tool, yourself. It is a strong confidence. No matter what happens, you will cope with it. You will succeed again and again. It is the most important thing. While you are in this world, you are nothing. Come on, leave your comfort zone and begin to grow. Maybe you will be the first among your friends who will show them the right path. And it's very likely to be. It is a huge responsibility, but it's worth it. I would like to end on this point. I hope it was useful for you. If you have any doubts about what you can or can't, this is your pig on the shoulder talking. You should decide who is the boss, you or the pig. Don't listen to it. Just do something right now and maybe one day your pig will become your friend.